in Venn diagram questions and I'm also going to have a look at some indices questions. This is from Additional Maths. This is from the Cambridge IGCSE and it probably uh, overlaps quite a lot with some of the other syllabuses as well. So here we go, Venn diagrams. This is the syllabus content. It's all about set language and notation. Let's have a look at a couple of questions. Here's the first one. We've got the universal set. That's this squiggly little E kind of symbol here. A and B. And we've got some notation here. This N means the number of elements in the universal set is 26. The number of elements in A intersection B dash, which is the complement, the opposite of B, is 7. The number of elements in A intersection B is 3. And the number of elements in B is 15. So it says draw a Venn diagram. Let's do that first. Here we go. Uh, intersection of A and B is 3. Therefore, the bit in the middle must be 3. The number of elements in B is 15. Well, if there's 3 in this bit, there must be 12 in this bit. Um, A intersection not B. Well, if you remember your Venn diagram shading, it should just be this region here. So therefore, that is 7. And everything is 26. So all together, 26. Therefore, this must be 4. And that pretty much does the question for us. There we go. The number of elements in A is that 7 and then that 3, so there's 10. Be careful. Sometimes this 7 might actually be the number 7, but in this case, it's the number of elements. So therefore, we've got 10 elements. Uh, part, oh, part II, the number of elements in A union B. That's this one and this one and this one. So 7 plus 3 plus 12 uh, is 22. And the last one, number of elements in A intersection B uh, sorry, A union B, and then complement, the opposite. Well, it's just this bit here, the bit that's outside the union of A and B. So that's four. Okay, another quick question. Uh, this time we're going to use some set builder notation. The universal set is uh, such that X is between 0 and 30, but not inclusive. P is multiples of 5, Q is multiples of 6, and R is multiples of 2. Um, okay, and then we need to decide what symbols to use for this one. Well, here we go. I've drawn out what P and Q are. So P is 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. 30 is not included because it's not in the, the, the domain that we've been given. And Q is the multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24. Um, I didn't bother writing out the multiples of 2. I'm sure you know these already. Um, and then the first one, we need to say, well... Uh, every single element of Q, which is 6, 12, 18, 24, all of those elements are also going to be in the multiples of 2, because they're in the 2 times table. And therefore, this gives us the first answer, which is this symbol here for subsets. So Q is a subset of R, because every single element of Q is also in R. Every 6 times table is also in the 2 times table. The second one, P intersection Q, we say, well, when do the numbers in P intersect with the numbers in Q? We can see that they don't, and therefore that's the empty set. There is no intersection. Okay, there we go. Quick questions on Venn diagrams. Now let's have a look at uh, two or three questions with indices and thirds. Okay, here's the first one. Uh, we've got 2 to the 2x minus 3 to the well, 3 times 2 to the x plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, the little trick on this one. We're going to let u equal 2x, 2 to the power x, and then therefore u squared. So if we square this side and square this side using the kind of laws of indices, we're going to get 2 to the 2x. So therefore u squared equals 2 to the 2x. Once we've got that, we can basically rewrite it as a quadratic. So we've got u squared minus 3u plus 2. Factorize out the quadratic. So we've got u minus 2 and u minus 1. Therefore, that gives us the solutions of u equals 2 and u equals 1. And then we just need to remember, well, u was equal to 2 to the x. So therefore, we've got 2 equals 2 to the x, or 1 equals 2 to the x, if we solve them. And remember, 2 to what power equals 2? Well, that's 1. 2 to what power equals 1? Well, that's 0. Therefore, x is 0. x is 1. Thank okay. you. Second question, uh, we'll look at rationalizing the denominator. That just means get rid of the thirds in the bottom. So the little trick to doing this is just to multiply by the conjugate. So if this is 2 plus root 3, let's multiply by 2 minus root 3. 
and then do 2 minus root 3 on the top, still the same fraction. The reason we multiply by the conjugate is that when we multiply this out, 2 times 2 gives us 4. We've got 2 root 3 and a minus 2 root 3, that disappears. Our root 3 times minus root 3 is equal to minus 3. So there we go. Uh, obviously, 4 take away 3 then just simplifies to give us 1. And therefore, we get 6 minus 3 root 3 over 1, and it just gives us that. Okay, uh, there can be a little bit more uh, this daunting. This, this looks like a nasty question. Uh, when we actually get down to it, it's not too bad. Um, we, we get some horrible fraction here. We need to try and simplify it as much as possible. We're just using the laws of indices in here. So let's do one bit at a time. Uh, let's do the first bit. We've got p to the third here. And we've got p to the minus two thirds uh, here. If we're uh, dividing, we're dividing the powers so we're dividing the, the things, so therefore we take away the powers here. So we're using the laws of indices. So we're going to get p to the one-third minus minus two-thirds. And then let's just check this bit here. So we've got qr all to the power five and then square root. Let's just check what does that equal. So we're basically using the laws of indices again. So this is going to be q5r5 and then square root means basically the same as uh, to the power half. So when we times the indices, we're going to get 5 over 2, and r is 5 over 2. So I've just rewritten this like this now. So I've got q to the minus a half on the top, and I'm going to have q, and this is, we worked out, is 5 over 2. And I'll write it as a minus, because it's on the bottom. And we've got r to the 3 over 2 on the top, and we've got r to the minus 5 over 2 on the bottom. Okay, um, and then we just need to, again, use the laws of indices. So I've already done this bit. So one third minus minus two thirds is one. I've got minus a half, and then I'm going to timesing, so I'm going to add some minus a half plus minus five over two gives us minus three, and then I got r three over two plus because I'm timesing minus five over two, and it gives me minus one. Okay, next question. Uh, here's just a, a quick example of a, a solving an absolute value question uh, or the modulus. So we've got 4x minus 3 uh, absolute value equals to x. Very little trick. Uh, all we need to do, we step number one, just ignore the, the modulus sign and just solve 4x minus 3 is equal to x. Solve that, uh, which gives us x is equal to 1. Or uh, we ignore the absolute and solve it equal to negative x. And if we solve that, we get 0.6. And that's it, really. Um, the only thing, just be slightly careful. If this is an inequality, make sure you put, for the second solution, the negative on the side of the absolute and then put the brackets around. Because then when you actually divide by negative, you have to flip the inequality. But when it's an equals, we can just, just take this little shortcut and we get those two possible solutions. Okay, right, next one. Um, we got a over root 3 plus 1 plus b over root 3 minus 1. And we want to find out what values of a and b give us this solution of root 3 minus 3. Okay, so step number one, let's rationalize the denominator. Top and bottom by root 3 minus 1. Top and bottom by root 3 plus 1. And if we simplify that, we're going to get a root 3 minus a plus b root 3 plus b all over 3 minus 1. So we get to that stage there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to look for anything with a root 3 in it and then make that into one fraction and anything with a, a number in and, and split that fraction back up again. So I kind of work backwards a little bit here. So I look at this fraction here, this part here, the a plus b times root 3 over 2, that's the bit with a root 3 in and then the minus a plus b over 2, that's the bit without the root 3 in. So I'll split them back up. And then if you see what, what I'm actually kind of going towards, I know my answer has to be root 3. At the moment, I've got a plus b over 2 lots of root 3. So therefore, a plus b over 2 must be equal to 1, because I need this to be 1 root 3. And equally, I want this minus a plus b over 2. That has to be equal to negative 3. So there we go. Minus a plus b over 2 must be equal to negative 3. I then solve these simultaneously, which I should get a is 4 and b is negative 2.
Okay, a couple of quick more questions. This is a bit of a nasty question, a bit of a time waster really. Um, we've got to do this without a calculator. We're given what the area of the trapezium is, which is 13 plus 5 root 5, and we've got to kind of manipulate everything to try and finally uh, find x in this, uh, in this diagram here. So I mean, I've split this up into A and B. You could try and do it in one go. I'll do it as part A and part B as well. So part A, this is the area of A, which is x times 3 plus root, root 5. Area of B is root 20 times x over 2. And I know the areas together, the area of A plus area of B must be equal to 13 plus 5 root 5. Okay, so I substitute all that in. So this is area of A, this is the area of B, add them together. I'm going to get 13 plus 5 root 5. Next step, I notice that I've got an x here and an x here. Well, I'm going to factorize. So I've factorized out the x. So I end up with x bracket 3 plus root 5 plus root 20 over 2. I'm now going to make root 20 hopefully into root 5, which it does go. So root 20 is the same as 2 root 5. The 2s cancel. So I've got a 3 plus root 5 plus root 5 is equal to this thing. That therefore gives me x is equal to 3 plus 2 root 5 is equal to 13 plus 5 root 5. Still not finished. I then divide, uh, I don't know why I put equals there. I should have a times. Um, so there we go, that's times there. So x times by that is equal to that. So now I divide by the 3 plus 2 root 5 and I get this. 13 plus 5 root 5 over 3 plus 2 root 5. I've still not finished because now I need to rationalize this denominator because it wanted the answer in p plus q root 5. So I need to rationalize this denominator now. So same as before, times by the conjugate. So I'm going to times by 3 minus 2 root 5, top and bottom. So there we go. And if I then expand this all out, I'm going to end up with a 9 and a minus 4 root 5, 4 times 5 on the bottom. And if I do all this on the top, I get this. Expand it all out, get on with it, and do all this. I end up with minus 11, minus 11 root 5, all over minus 11. And finally, divide everything by minus 11, I get 1, and then plus root 5. Quite a lot of hassle for 5 marks, that one. Okay, there we go. And let's have a look at one last one. Here we go. Express uh, cube root of minus 8x to the 9 times by the sixth root of x to the minus 3 in a kind of a nicer format. Well, let's do it one step at a time. Minus 8x to the 9. Well, cube root is to the power of 3rd. So therefore, minus 8 to the 3rd is minus 2. x to the 9 times the powers because it's indices and we've got a bracket. So that gives us x to the 3. x to the minus 3 to the, mi to the 1, 6 times the powers because it's in the bracket. So we get minus a half. And therefore, I'm going to get minus 2x cubed times x to the minus a half. Add the powers, because I'm timesing, therefore minus 2x to the 2.5. Okay, and then last part, hence solve the equation. Well, I've already got this answer from the previous part. So there we go, minus 2x to the 2.5 is equal to this thing. Divide both sides by negative 2. I'm going to get x to the 2.5 equal to 3.125. And then use my calculator, the 2.5 root, stick it on my calculator, and I get x is 25. So there we go, a few questions on indices and Venn diagrams.